Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out, here with Joe Caldina, 7-0 prospect. Joe, we're here at Tony Sims's gym. You've got a big fight coming up in just over five weeks time against Sean Dodd, vacant Commonwealth lightweight title, August the 4th. How, much, how have your preparations been going for that fight? And is this the right fight at the right time? Uh, preparations been going uh, great. I, I didn't have too, too long off after my last fight. Um, I was in great shape for that fight too. Um, and I was just taking over. I had one week of doing nothing. Um, went on a holiday for a couple of days. Um, we're still training out there. And just been taking over and then come straight back in the gym and straight back into the camp. So uh, for me, I'm, it's just building on top of um, uh, the fitness that I already had from my last fight. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to this fight. It's, uh, it's a great fight um, for the fans as well. He's, um, he's a tough, tough man. Um, I like Sean quite a, quite a lot. He's a, a, he's a, he's a gentleman in the, in the sport, but um, obviously he's in my way. Um, and he's trying to stop me from achieving my dream, so it's just a, a, a fight that I need to get out of the way for, for me to achieve. It. Seven and zero, oh, six knockouts. Sean Dodd's coming off a defeat, although at a good level. Yeah. Um, stopped obviously in, in that defeat by Tommy Coyle. He's quite straightforward in terms of style. Really good work, great fitness. You're the guy with the skills, the slickness, the angles, the footwork. Is this an example of great making? Do you think to, to really bring out the best in you? Yeah, um, his style suits me down to the ground. Uh, so when I come forward, um, he, like you said, he's a thick guy. He comes forward. It's nothing. Um, he don't do anything uh, amazingly well, but he does everything, everything good and, and decent. So he's definitely going to be a, a big test for me, and he's a big stepper for myself. Um, for me, my, my boxing skills are uh, uh, second to none. I've been all around the world, 180 other amateur fights, box Olympic uh, medalists, Olympic champions, beat Olympic medalists, I'm a European champion as amateur, so skill set, there's no doubt about it. I've got a better skill set than what he has, but he's, been, he's got the experience um, in, the, in the pro ring and um, he's, he's going to try and uh, stop me on the line. So. I mean, yeah. should, should it all go well for you on the night and you win the Commonwealth title, there's a, a clear domestic fight that people are going to start talking about straight away. They've probably already started talking about it online, I would imagine, between yourself and British champion Lewis Ritson. What do you make of Ritson's rapid rise? It seems to have come almost from nowhere. Yeah, he's, um, he's a good fighter. As you can see, he's uh, stopped a lot of good uh, boys um, early on. Um, he's a very big guy, very strong guy. And um, yeah, he's, 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 uh, he's producing the goods. So. Yeah, um, it's a, a fight that I'd look forward to um, down the line, but obviously I've got to prove myself at that domestic scene as well. Do you see guys like him and Connor, Luke Campbell as the kind of big attraction fights that you can look forward to? Not necessarily the ones that will get you to titles, but certainly the ones that will draw viewers in and, and get you onto a bigger stage. Yeah, of course. An even bigger stage. Of course. Um, they're, they're fights that are definitely out there. Uh, but whether they um, by the time they, they'll be there when by the time I get to that level. Um, who knows? Uh, a crawler. I don't see him having too many more years in in the, uh, in the sport. He's, he's he's definitely um, still got a, a a bit left in the tank, but um, he's going to be the best uh, for big fights. Um, crawler, Lee Campbell, same as um, you got Lewis Ritten. He's got all the up and coming fighters that are going to be there, which um, is them fights are going to appeal to myself. But yeah, I, I want to get to a world title. So if that means I have to go through them. Um, then so be it. How important is it to you that you have these kind of big marquee domestic clashes compared to just winning the titles and getting to where you need to be? Um, you always need a rival. Uh, sometimes it brings out the best um, in you and it, it, it builds British it builds boxing. Um, but yeah, you, you, you need these rivals and uh, these big domestic fights and it, it just adds adds money to the to the pot and um, it brings the nights of, of boxing to Britain. Something I've wanted to ask you for a while, you were obviously based in your home country in Wales as an amateur, very, very successful amateur at that. What made you choose to relocate all the way over here in, in Essex and, and to work with Tony Sims rather than a coach back home? Um, I always knew Tony was a great trainer anyway. He used to pop up um, to Sheffield uh, with Kevin Mitchell. Um, when you were on Team GB? Yeah, Team GB. I was, I was fine with Kevin. Um, O'Hara Davis, Connor Ben, I was just fine with them. And I always knew he was a great coach, just like looking, even if I wasn't by and I'd look at the advice he was giving them and I just knew he was very knowledgeable. Um, saying my coach back home wasn't, um, and he wasn't a great trainer, a trainer but I just needed a, a change. I needed something fresh and for me, um, coming up here, 
was, was perfect. I, I came up here, I had a week up here, um, I brought my father up so we could sort of see and I, I take his advice um, and, and uh, very seriously and he, he, he liked, liked Tony how he was training me. So um, I sort of sat down with the close people around me and, and sort of agreed that this was the best thing for me and it just brings me away from all the distractions. Um, if I brought my kids up here, which I'd love to bring them up here, but I think at this stage um, I need to be sort of, uh, how can I say, sort of away from all the distractions, like my kids are only young, so my one's up at uh, like half five every morning and sometimes their um, sleep pattern breaks up, so I'm not getting the right rest I need, so for me it's just um, solely concentrating on boxing up here, um, I don't have no distractions, I eat, sleep, train, eat, sleep, train, and that's all I do up here, so for me it's, uh, it's a perfect place for me. How old are your kids? Um, I got one that's three in July and one that's one in July, so yeah, they're, they're birthdays four days apart. So. And how many weeks of each training camp do you spend here? Um, probably 10, 12. It must um, be really hard yeah, for you course, to leave them. And uh, for my first year, I didn't really sp uh, spend too much time at home. I was fighting quite regular, so I was going home for uh, um, a couple of days, maybe a week or two after my fight, then train at home and then come straight back into camp. I, I stay up here Monday to Friday, and I go home on the weekend, see him for two days. Um, so you go home every weekend? Yeah, still? so okay, keep, it, keep it fresh. But um, it is tiring, but I just I, I need to see him on the weekend because um, I, it'd kill me if I didn't, so. Well, yeah, especially when they're so young, you yeah, don't want to miss all the kind of milestones, like I, first words and all that. I miss I missed a lot from my first, uh, my, my first daughter, um, Sophia. I was in Sheffield um, in GB, so everything leading up to the Olympics, I have to make the Olympics. So for me, I miss a lot uh, of her early days. And now when I'm a peer, I'm missing a lot of my, my other daughter, Valentina's, um, uh, early days but it's everything I'm doing is for them and the sacrifices I'm making uh, making keeps me hungry and everything I'm, I'm doing like I said is for them and to give them a better future you must have a very supportive partner as well I'd imagine oh yeah of course um, <laughs> uh, she's not too fond on it but uh, she, she understands what, what I'm doing it for and um, yeah my, uh, my family uh, all, all the same they support me in everything I do so yeah. Given how good you're looking so far as a pro and how fast you've been moved, do you think that's vindicated your decision to train down here? Uh, or over here, I suppose. Yeah, uh, no, not really. I, 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 just, I just love how, uh, how Tony was training the guys and uh, he was a, he's a great guy, um, great trainer and he's, he's proven to be a great trainer so for me it was, it was going to be a couple of people I was looking at but he was the first one. I I I um I came to uh, sort of a, um, sit down and assess and, and train with and see how how we got on, but we got on straight away. And I I didn't want to take that chance of going somewhere else. And then um, like, oh, if if I would have gone with them, what could have happened? So I rather I was comfortable. I rather stay here. He's a great trainer, and um, I look forward to the to the uh, rise to the world title with them. I believe yourself and stablemate Ricky Burns rent rooms in the same house or same flat yeah, yeah, yeah. down here. Same house, yeah. Yeah. What What's that like? I mean, you see a lot of each other outside the gym um, as well. No, not really. No? Because obviously we tra we train very hard, and it's two to three times a day. So um, the only time we see each other is when we're in the gym um, on the track in the morning. Um, and if we go to the gym together, then we uh, we come in and he, I go into my room, he goes upstairs into his room, <laughs> and then that's it. And then in the mornings, um, on a Wednesday, he'll knock me up, Joe, we're going for a run. So i got to get up and go for a run with, um, with Ricky. Um, he's, he's proven he, he, he 50 odd fights, well, 50 fights now. Um, he's been a three-way world champion, so whatever he's doing, he, it's, all, it's, all, um, it's all proven. So. I'd rather take advice and, and try and copy what every he does um, in training wise. Sounds quite a, a lonely existence, although obviously there's a reason behind it. What, what do you do in your limited spare time? Watch boxing. <laughs> um, boxing and, uh, and just movies really. Because I'm, I'm, I'm stuck to that room, I don't really, I just want to rest. Um, like I said, I train two to three times a day. So current boxing or old boxing? Both. Like I love Sugar Ray Leonard. Um, so I always watch Sugar Ray Leonard. If I'm if I go on and watch, I watch a couple of fights of his so highlights. I, I now I'm, I watch uh, Canelo, a lot of Canelo. 
a lot of Jorge Linares. Um, and then obviously I watch little bits of clips of every other fighter out there. Um, so yeah, I just want to, uh, like Tony said, you, if, if you were, um, how can I say, an office worker, you'd be studying all the office um, office information that you need to for your job. So it's, it's the same thing with boxing. You have to study your game, your sport, and um, and uh, and how can I say, expand your knowledge in, in this sport. Brilliant. Well, Joe, we wish you the very best of luck on August 4th against Sean Dodd. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Cheers.